counts the stars one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything, of all creatures great and small. Don't know what tomorrow will bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. I don't have all the answers to the questions of life. But I know in whom I have believed. He knew who I was when he carried my cross. He knew that I would fail him, but he took my loss. He knows my name, every step that I take, every tear that I cry. He knows my name, every running behind there. I was looking for another song for him to sing. And uh, I'm so used to going to all the time. Thank y'all. I appreciate that. Um, and so as the choir comes down, we'll do as we normally do. Uh, we'll come this morning. We'll gather around the altar, have a word of prayer. Uh, do remember mom and dad is there away. Continue to pray for them. Uh, and all the ones that couldn't be here with us. And also remember Brother Mike as he's preaching for us this morning. Uh, that God would use him this morning to give the message uh, that we need today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, and pray for the services today. Father, Lord, we thank you. God, for another day you've given us to be here. And thank you, Lord, for the ones that's made their way out today. Lord, for the great crowd. And God, we thank you, Lord, for the service so far. Uh, Lord, for the opening this morning. Uh, Lord, Brother Ken, Lord, all the Sunday school teaching. And uh, Lord, the choir singing this morning. God, we're thankful for that. And Father, we pray, Lord, you continue to bless the service today. Father, we pray, Lord, you'd be with Mom and Daddy. Uh, Lord, as they're out of town. Uh, Lord, watch over them. And 
continue to keep them safe, uh, Lord, on the roads. Uh, God, allow them to have a great service where they're at this morning. Uh, and uh, Father, I pray, Lord, you'd be with us here today. Father, we pray you'd be with all the singing uh, that takes place this morning. God, that you would touch and bless. Uh, Lord, lift up in a special way today. Father, we pray, Lord, for Brother Mike uh, Lewis, Lord, as he comes to preach for us today. Uh, God, that you would hide him behind the cross. And God, that you would use him. Uh, Lord, to preach your word. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would recall the things to his memory. Uh, God, that he studied. And Lord, that you laid on his heart. And God, that he would just be a vessel for you. Uh, Lord, just to be able to share your word, uh, Lord, your thoughts, and uh, God, your word with us here today at New Life. Father, we pray, Lord, for the ones, uh, Lord, that are sick, Lord, that couldn't be here with us today. God, we pray you reach down and touch them uh, in a special way. God, get them back to us, uh, Lord, safe and sound, Lord, the ones that's got surgeries. Uh, coming up, God, we pray you be with them, and God, give them strength to get through, Lord, doctor's appointments, Father, whatever it may be. Uh, God, I pray you reach down and just touch each one in a special way. Father, forgive us, Lord, when we sin and fall short each and every. We thank you and love you for what you've done and, God, what you will do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it is good to see everybody here this morning. Appreciate you being here uh, today and making it through the storm uh, that we had. And Everybody's glad they got power back on for the ones that lost power. Um, I know I'm glad to have it back on, so uh, thankful to have the power back on, and uh, thankful for all the guys uh, that's out there working, getting all that stuff done. Um, I'm, I'm thankful they're, they're willing to go out and do that and take care of us to get our power back on, so a big thank you to them also. Uh, but again, good to see everybody here today. Appreciate you being here. Uh, just a few announcements we'll get out of the way um, this morning. Uh, don't forget, October the 16th. Uh, will be our old-fashioned day here at the church. Uh, please make a note of that. Uh, invite everybody if you can. Uh, we're going to have stew uh, and barbecue after the service. Um, free of charge. You can take some with you when you get done. Take it home with you and have it for supper again that night if you want to. Uh, is it. But come that day. Enjoy a good day with us. It's going to be a great day. Uh, be a lot of singing. And preaching service will start at 1030 that day. Um, don't forget that service will start at 10.30. There'll be no Sunday school that morning. We'll just start service at 10.30 uh, that day and have a great day in that. So please invite um, people to come and um, invite them to the service that day. If you've got your old cars, uh, motorcycles, trucks, whatever, uh, old people you want to bring, you can bring them too. Um, so we'll take all of it there. And, um, but uh, do remember that. It's going to be a great day. We try to do that every year, and it's worked out great for us and turned out good. Um, and so do do continue to remember that. Uh, like I said, that's October the 16th. Um, again, thank you to the men that come to the meeting uh, on Thursday night, the other night. I know some of you couldn't make it, uh, and you told us you wouldn't be there, uh, which is fine. We're just taking care of some of the stuff that was preparing and getting ready uh, for that day. Uh, but thank you to everyone that did come um, and have a part in that. And so um, as far as any other announcements, I don't know of anything else off the top of my head um, unless anybody else knows of anything right now. Is it? Um, do continue to remember mom and daddy um, as they're away. I talked to them this morning again, um, and they said love everybody, they missed everybody. Um, and so we got a short video where they sent um, that we're going to watch this morning. Uh, they wanted to send something to this morning um, for it. And so I'm going to watch that real quick and then we'll get right back to it. love you uh we would uh, definitely love to be with you today but we're headed out to church in a few minutes uh we're in uh bird in the hand uh pennsylvania just outside of lancaster and uh, we've enjoyed our trip uh we've uh, been through six states and about 1100 miles uh, mm -hmm. since we left tuesday morning and uh, we thank god for our safety so far and uh, we're excited about uh, the next few days uh, being around here and uh, just doing some things around the Pennsylvania area uh, before we get back home. Uh, but uh, we want to let Brother Mike know that we're praying for him Amen. this morning. Amen. And I pray that you'll cheer him on today and yes. also for Michael tonight. Amen. Come and support him. Uh, but the big thing is we miss you guys. And uh, yes. we look forward to being back with you next Sunday. And, Mom, you got anything you want to say? Oh, I just miss everybody. And I know that 
my stand-in this morning who is teaching is going to do a fantastic job probably, and i probably already got through it by now and my choir leader who's standing in is going to do a fantastic job also we love you and we'll look forward to seeing you next sunday and uh, we're praying for you guys today and uh, please pray for us we're heading Amen. to a church about 10 minutes away today it's independent baptist church uh, we'll be somewhere tonight we're not sure exactly what church we'll be in tonight but we will be somewhere and uh, you be somewhere also in church, I Amen. mean. Amen. But we love you, and uh, we'll see you soon. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye. All right. Well, I wanted to send that video uh, this morning to everybody and let them know. And, uh, again, thank you uh, to everybody that is filling in for them. Brother Kidman uh, is filling in on Wednesday night. Brother Mike being able to preach this morning. And uh, T.T. is filling in for Mama this morning. We appreciate that. I told T.T. when she came upstairs, I said, look here. You didn't hung around mama too long. We're getting down to the last minute. We're ready to start church, and y'all still down there having Sunday school, okay? I'm going to tell you, the Bible says, let my people go, is what I'm, like I tell mama. So um, I don't know. We may have to look into a different direction next time I'm going to teach her for her class, but that's okay. We'll get it all worked out. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I love her. I can say that to her, though, because she loves me, too. So um, anyway, I know Brother Mike has had several threats this morning. If he runs over 12 o'clock, we're going to... I mean, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, no, y'all do pray for him uh, this morning as he comes preach for us. Uh, and then I'll be preaching tonight um, for the 6 o'clock service. Do uh, remember me tonight, too, as we preach. But um, at this time, we'll get our ushers to come forward. And um, we'll take our offerings this morning. And uh, while they're coming, you'll be turning to page 390. Page 390, there's power in the blood. And, uh, <clears throat> we'll go to the Lord in prayer. This morning, uh, before we get started, Brother Gene, will you pray for us, sir? Father, we just thank you for this night. We thank you for all that's doing and all that's left. We thank you, Father, for each one of us that's uh, left here this morning. Father, we thank you for the ones that are able. Father, we pray also for those who are uh, under the sound of this production of this word. Bless my heart and mind and my spirit. Strengthen me for life. Father, we pray for all people that have come to pray with us this morning. We stir up our youth. Yes. Father, we just thank you and honor you. Amen. Let's all stand. 390, there's power in the blood.
we do so, I'm going to get Brother Kidman up here to sing this morning. But before we do, because if I don't do this, I will get in trouble for sure this morning uh, before I go home. But are there any birthdays this week, um, last week, last month, any time that we did not sing to, or anybody just wants to be sung to that would like to come up this morning um, and stand up here to be sung to? That's it. So I know I've got at least one. Cam, happy birthday. Come on up, Miss Paul. You got a birthday, Miss Paul? Uh huh. Ah. Ah. Come on up. Come on up. Don't, Miss Jessica, I'm sure you didn't have a birthday that we did not sing to, right? Absolutely. Anybody else want to tell on anybody? Miss Ariel? Something's telling me you may have had a birthday. Absolutely. And who? Oh, Noah and Christy. Come on up here. Wesley, too. Did Matthew have a birthday? Would you, Matthew, you better come on up here this morning, boy. <laughs> Trying to sneak out on me. Uh-huh. Who else we got? Vivi, did you have a birthday? It's on Tuesday. That's close enough. Come on up here. Come on up. Keep on. We'll have half the crowd up here. Hey, boy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, we got a good crowd up here this morning. Tyler, you got one, too. Brandy, Brandy had a birthday, too. Did you get sung to? She got sung to? I think she did. That same day. You won't hear. But I already got mine, though. I already got mine. Anybody else that had a birthday this morning? Who else we got? Grayson, are you back there? You just had a party. You better get up here, boy. We ain't leaving nobody at anniversary. Anybody have an anniversary this past week, month? Years, any time, huh? <coughs> Next week, Brother Jason, you might as well come on up here. Cause Lord, help we forget it. We don't want to do that. So, unless you think Miss Jessica just wants to come back up again next week, then we'll just wait and do it. <laughs> ah, Brandon, Kayla, uh huh. Yeah, several of them. We keep growing and growing and growing. We look like the Martin family up here. Man. <laughs> anybody else out there? Anybody want to tell on anybody else before we sing? Nobody else? We're Baptists around here. You know we'll tell on you in a minute. I ain't know that. Yeah. Tracy, did you have a birthday? You better come up here, girl, if you did. Next Sunday? Are you going to be here next Sunday? Well, you come on up here then. You come on up here. You ain't trying to sneak out on me like that. Uh-uh. Come on up here. Hey, I ain't kidding. If not, you're going to be up here next time by yourself. Uh, you better come on up here with the crowd. Anybody else out there? Anybody? We got a good crowd up here this morning. A good crowd. I ain't kidding. I had a good crowd out here this morning. Anybody else just want to be sung to while they got a crowd up here? You come up here. All right, Blake. Let's do happy birthday. Let's all stand. We'll do happy birthday first. All right, Brother Kidman, you and Miss Kathy can come on up this morning. Brother, Brother Kidman and Miss Kathy are going to sing one uh, for us this morning uh, before Brother Mike comes to preach for us.
wanted to reiterate, uh, I talked to the pastor about this, and I wanted to reiterate what I said Wednesday night. There's more people here and some youth here. Um, Barry Spears had a wonderful testimony, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But if we're not careful when we hear testimony like that, especially you young people, you'll think he got through it. I can get through it. And I wanted to uh, just reiterate to you, I talked to the pastor about it, and, and uh, wanted to share this. I shared it Wednesday night about a young lady named Mary, 18 years of age. She was a salutatorian of her, co- of her high school class, and um, she was strongly involved in her youth group at her church. That's how I knew her. I knew her through her, her youth pastor was a friend of mine. He was also a state trooper, and he was called to a wreck where he found Mary laying there with a Budweiser bottle sticking out of her eye socket. She never made it. I could tell you story after story. I could uh, tell you about my class, and I, I told a lot more than I'm going to say this morning. But my class was known as the class of death. There were over 380 of us that began as our freshman year, and there was uh, about 180 of us that graduated. One of those was Randy. He put a 357 in his mouth on August 8, 1978, and blew his brains out. He didn't make it. That night, 16 of my classmates died. On August, I'm sorry, August 10, 1978. Now I could go into each one of their horrific stories. They didn't make it. As far as I know, none of them were saved. Just because you hear a testimony, a great testimony, how God redeemed somebody out of a sinful life, doesn't mean you'll make it. Amen? Especially if God's already given you that grace once. I want to sing this song. I mentioned this song, Annette, in uh, um, hearing Barry's uh, testimony. reminded me of an old preacher I met years ago and named uh, Jim Delishmit. Jim Delishmit was one of the originals of the Hells Angels. And... Uh, um, there's two different groups of Hell's Angels. He helped found one of the groups. I'm not sure which one. But after he got saved, uh, he, he gave this testimony of that he had a praying mama. And one day he was home visiting her, and she said, are you going to church with me tomorrow, Jimmy? And she said, no. Or he said, no. And you know I don't believe that garbage. She said, why, you chicken? <laughs> so to prove he wasn't chicken, he went to church. He said, I got up to leave, made a wrong turn got born again amen he was an evangelist when i met him he was in his 80s when i when i met him but he sang this song and it really touched my heart and i want to sing it for you we want to sing it for you this morning it's called the old man is dead on your mind they wonder why I'm not drinking and still painting this old town green tell them I'm serving Jesus now and that old man is dead
Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man, woman, child, boy, girl, be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. I used to live such a wicked life. I had no hope inside. And I was lost in darkness, just searching for the light. Then one night in a little church, after hearing what the preacher Gave my life to Jesus, and that old man was dead. Thank God. Now the man you see before you may look a lot the same. I may wear the same. same old name, but you're looking on the outside, if you could see inside instead, you would see a brand new Yes, you're still looking on the outside if you could see inside instead you would see a brand new man cause that old man is dead thank God that old Good morning. Good morning. Let me get this thing on here. Then fell off my belt. Can you hear me now? <clears throat> I have prayed and prayed. I've fasted. I've done everything I know to do to be obedient to God today. Turn to Romans, chapter 8. <coughs> That's about 10 different messages could be in Romans 8. So I'm going to try to go all the way through it. I'm going to make one message out of the whole chapter. Let us read. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. <clears throat> For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. What's it saying? Our flesh was so weak we couldn't, we could not abide by the law. But God gave us that grace. <clears throat> God sent his own son in the likeness 
of a sinful flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for our sins, condemning sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. We are debtors. Not to the flesh, to the living, to, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You hear that? If you're born again, we're the sons of God. We are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Of adoption. We are adopted into the family. Not quite yet, but we will be someday. <clears throat> Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs. We are heirs and joint heirs of God. You have to grasp that. With Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the <clears throat> earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the Son of God. For the creature was made subject, vanity, not willing, but by the reason of him whom has subject to the same in hope. Let me explain a little bit about the creature that we're talking about. It's, we often wonder why so much turmoil is going on in the world. Why everything... Well, Danny, you got cancer. Why you got cancer? It started before we were born. It started with Adam and Eve because they sinned. That sin come upon the world. So the world is cursed. We live in a cursed world. And it's going to be that way until this world is destroyed. That's the reason we have that blessed hope. We're going to someday, we're going to go to Jesus. And even the curse of this world, the creature he's talking about, 
It's the creation. See, when God created the world, he created a perfect world. But man, he sinned. He sinned. He brought the curse on the animals, on the trees, on our flesh. We, only, we don't just only have the curse of the world, but the devil and, the, and his fallen angels, we have them. They tempt us. But if we didn't even have that, we still couldn't live a perfect life. But we're to strive to if we're born again in Jesus Christ. So then we have that blessed hope. But the ones that don't strive to, they have no hope. They're angry. They're mad because they're part of this world. Only as happy as they see is that one night that they go out on the dance floor or they take that drink or they get that high from the drug. That's the only happiness they have. But we as born again Christians, we can live in peace and have that hope. Even though we know we're going to suffer here, now. But we can still rejoice. Because look at what Christ did. Look how much he suffered. So the suffering we do now, it's nothing. It's nothing compared to what Christ did. We should suffer. We should suffer. How will we know how Christ suffered for us? So we've got to suffer some. It's just, this message, God gave it to me, but it was to, to tell y'all, but he, it was for me. It was for me. Uh, I looked and I read and I read. It, this is what I was going to speak on. But I, he wouldn't let me away from it, so I had to come to it. But I, I had to stop right there. Let's, let's see. Well, what verse was I wrong? For the curse was made subject to vanity and not willing, but by the reason of him who has subject the same in hope. Because the, cre the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage. The creature, that's the curse of this world. It's us. It's everything. It's the whole being is what it is. <clears throat> of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth. Let me stop right there on 22. Groaneth. That is the creature. He groaneth. We groaneth. I groaneth. You say, what, what do you mean you groan? I groan because I want to be like more like Christ. I want to be pleasing to him. I'm born again. I'm a debtor. Oh, yes, I know I'm a debtor because he paid a debt for me that I couldn't pay. So I'm one of his now. So, yes, I groan. I groan to be with him. I groan to be out of this mess that we're in here. For I know and I believe that someday I'm going to be with him. I have that blessed hope. And, and you... Y'all too, as new converts, this message was kind of for you too, too, to reassure y'all of that blessed hope in anyone else that's been saved. But sometimes we have to be reminded. We go through life, in everyday life, we work, we battle with the stress and everything in life, but yet we have this blessed hope. We know this is temporary. Brother Danny, when you close your eyes and you open them again, you're going to be on the other side. Amen. Body, this flesh, it's going to lay down. You get your new body. You get your new body. Everyone that's born again, they'll have that new body. It's just closing your eyes and opening them again. That's all it is. But if you're not born again, you will still open your eyes. But then the judgment. You'll be cast into outer darkness. That's what God tells us. You'll be in the outer darkness. But we, everything you do from this, this point on since you've accepted Christ, good or bad, Jesus Christ is your judge. He's the one that judges you. When God looks on you, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees you as white as snow, pure and white. But Jesus, he's your judge. So we are to do like we're supposed to do. We're supposed to live as much.
much like Christ as we possibly can. As we possibly can. <coughs> I was in 22. Groaning and travail in pain together until now. And now, and not only that, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit, the first fruit, that's when you receive Christ. When that weight was took off of your shoulders and you knew that you was born again. You knew that you were saved. That was my first fruit. <clears throat> I said, grown within I, I said, witness, where am I at? I didn't lost my spots here. Grown. 23. <laughs> Let me go back and start back at 23. And not only that, but ourselves also, which has the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, we're just for the, uh, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. The adoption of our bodies. That's when we're going to go up to heaven. For we are. <coughs> Saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we wait patiently, we wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes us intersection for us with groaning, which can not be uttered. That's the Holy Spirit. He makes groaning to the Father, to Jesus, for us. And he that searches the heart know what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes us intersection for the saints according to the will of of God. That's Jesus. Jesus Christ, he searches our heart. He searches our heart. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the call according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we then say? To, the, to these things. If God be for us, who can be against us? <clears throat> he that spared not, listen to this, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, for us to be saved again. So we were dead. We were dead to God. You Asking to come into your heart and save you. Now we're born again. We may be in this flesh, but we thrive to live with Christ. We thrive for spiritual things. What is the spiritual things? The Word of God. We've got to have it. You've got to read it. <clears throat> How shall he not with him also freely give us all things, all things, whom shall lay anything to the charge of God, elect. It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yet rather that is raised again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intersection for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, 
famine, nakedness, a peril of sore, as it is written, but thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors, more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> Did you realize, Brother Danny, what you got? When you got saved, that uh, the first chapter, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. When you got saved, that means that your sins is covered. They're blotted out. Everything... Is in the past, it's gone. When God looks down at you, he don't even see you. He sees you in heaven. Because your past is gone. The only thing he can see is you is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're pure. You're pure and white. So we just don't, we don't realize when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, what really takes place. Even though we live here, this is temporary. And the older I get, time passes fast. It passes fast. It don't, it, it just, it, when I was a teenager in my early 20s, and I listened to the older folks, says life is like a vapor. I said, no, especially when I was a teenager, because I didn't get to get my license until I was 18. So I thought I would never get 18. I mean, I had to ride with somebody else because I'd done foolish things. I bought a new motorcycle, and I wrecked it, and I totaled it, and hit a car, and like got killed, I killed somebody else. Then hurt the man in the car, just knocked him up the road away. But God had a plan for my life. I didn't know what it was. <clears throat> I lived the way I wanted to live. I enjoyed life. I didn't know nothing about God. When I was a small, small child, I remember mom and dad had taken us to church once or twice, and that was it. I didn't know nothing. Didn't know nothing. I worked for my brother. I dug graves. I've dug graves and dug into another grave and see buckles and handles coming out and water coming out of the casket. And, and I was telling the man, I said, look, we're too close to another grave. Oh, no. That's, that ain't no it ain't, I got the map right here. Ain't nobody buried there. I said, I'm telling you. I jumped down in the hole. I pulled a buckle up, a hinge out, and I said, what is this? Oh, well, well let's, let's see. They go back and get some more paperwork. All of this world of things. We move over six inches, put it in there in the house. Pump the water out of the grave. I didn't know nothing about God. I'd be standing there listening to the preacher preach the funeral. Still didn't know nothing. Still didn't know nothing. What I'm trying to say is you can go to church one time or a hundred times and it just won't hit you. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will get you. You'll realize that you're a sinner. And until you realize that you're a sinner, until you realize you're a sinner and need to be saved, you'll never be saved. That's the way the Holy Spirit works. Now, is everybody going to be born again? Is everybody going to be saved? I wish, I wish they would be. My desire is to see everybody in heaven. But everybody's not going to follow Christ. Why? Because they love the things of the world. They love the things of the world. Condemnation. What does condemnation mean? It is a powerful reason to live for Christ and be free of sin. 
And to live for Christ, we first got a few notes here. First need to know what it's like and what it means in everyday life. Well, in everyday life, I'll use me as an example. <clears throat> I wished I had condemnation in everyday life. Uh, it was uh, several years ago. I had, uh, I don't know, 10, 9, 10 tickets, speaking tickets. I had 11 points against my license, been handed more points, and then turned around and got another ticket for three more points. If I'd had condemnation, I wouldn't have to worry about it. So I ended up having to go to school to get three points dropped off because you, you couldn't have no more than, than that. I did. Well, the school I had to go to, it was for alcoholics. Well, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I was for speeding ticket, but that was on school to have. And uh, so I went to school for, what was it, four times, what was it, every, I think it was four times a month, it was just one, one day a week, what it was, or one night a week. And I went up there, and, and they, they taught all about alcoholics, tell you what you can be, a, how you become an alcoholic, and, and they act, give us a questionnaire and had to fill out and they'd ask you questions. Says, do you do you drink up beer when you get off work in the evenings? Casual drinker? Do you have to drink every weekend and stuff like that? And I, no, I said sometimes I will, sometimes I don't. Do you have to have one every weekend? You get if you get tired and hot, do you have to have one? I said no. Sometimes I want water. And uh, it was me and one more in the whole class. He says. Uh, all of y'all are alcoholics, but two of them. And uh, he said, those two will be the only two that will know unless they show you the paper. Because he wrote on our paper, I don't think y'all are really alcoholic, but you better watch. <laughs> 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 but uh, if I would had condemnation, that means Brother Kidman or somebody would have paid for it. See, Jesus Christ paid for our sin. That's what condemnation means. That means we're covered. Does that give us the right to go out and sin still? Oh, no. Oh, no. Because now we're living for Jesus. What did he say? We're debtors. We're debtors to Jesus. And if we're debtors to Jesus, we're to live like Jesus. And if we're to live like Jesus, what are we supposed to do? You get in God's word. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. He will tell you. Let's see. Let me get over here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's start right here. 30, let's see. Matthew 25, 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick and in prison and came in, into thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then said he say unto say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye curse into cast into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. It wasn't prepared for us. <clears throat> you say, well, I haven't met nobody like that. When we become born again Christians, I don't care if you're poor or rich. You see someone broke down on the road, you help them. You see someone hungry, you feed them. Are you to give them everything you've got? 
That's not what he's telling you. He's telling you to be willing to help everyone you meet. And even preachers, when they come up and preach, a visiting pastor, if they come up and preach, it's not left up to the church to take care of them. If it's a rich church, that's fine. But I don't leave it up to them. If you want a blessing out of their preaching, you give. If they take up a special offering for them, you give. You give. I'm not telling you you got to give them a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or nothing like that. You give them what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. If it's a dollar, you give them a dollar. If it's a quarter, you give them a quarter. But I want you to think when you give them such a small amount, what would carry your vehicle up and down the road? How would you travel hundreds of miles? How would you pay for tires and insurance, wear and tire on that vehicle? He dedicated his life to God. He dedicated his life to people to see souls saved. Brother Kidman, he does that. He travels. Yes. Even though he's got churches that, that send him money, that's just everyday life. But all this other extra, when he's got to travel, he allows to travel 100 miles or 500 miles. They may not even take him up, take up offering. And then he allows to leave that and go 100 miles and go to another church. He may get a little offering. If the church called him again, the one that didn't take up no offering, didn't get no money, you think he would go? He's a man of God. He would still go. Why? His faith is in God. It ain't in the people. My faith is not in the people. My faith is in my Lord and Savior and my Father in heaven. So what I'm telling you, be willing to whatever you hire, whatever you hire, whatever possessions you got, be willing to share it with others, to help others. That's what God wants us to do. That's what, what did Jesus do? He didn't have money, but he gave him what he could. He gave him what he could. Did he condemn anyone? There's so many times we'll condemn one another. Well, he's got the same opportunity. He can get a job. He can get a job. I've said that. I'm a fellow with no education. I more or less educated myself on the men like Brother Kidman, my pastor. I know where my pastor came from. He didn't have no education. He educated himself more so than I did. Schooling is one thing, and I think schooling is important. But education of life is more important than anything else. And the education of God's Word is the most important thing that you'll ever learn in your life. That is the most important thing. I never learned to read until I started reading God's Word. I had to see it. I had to. I had to. I woke out. Eight tracks. Most of you don't even know what an eight track is. I will out three sets of those on the Bible, listening to it. Then it come out with the cassettes. I listen to those. I will out two sets of those. And then it come out with the CDs. I will out one set of those. Whenever I got in my truck, my work truck, it was on. When, it, when the switch come on, one was in there. Sometimes I would listen at one two or three weeks at a time. I should know the Bible front to back. I don't. Every time I read it, I try to read it through at least once a year. Every time I read it, I see something new. Every time. Every time I read it, I see something new. And even this chapter right here, when I, when I read this chapter, and I had spoke on it, a little bit before. I saw, I, well, I spoke on uh, condemnation, but I seen so much more this time. So much more. And, and when you come down to the, being the debtor, that just got me. That just got me. 
when I look at debt, what I owe Christ. When they hung him on that cross, they done already beat him, stripped him of his clothes, and they hung him on that cross. He's bleeding. And I think back when he said, I heard a preacher preach one time, he said when they beat him, they beat him with whips with kind of nine tails, kind of nine tails, bones and rocks. And he said when they reached and grabbed him, he would grab into the meat and they'd snatch it back and pull the meat right off his bones. He went through that for us. He knew he was going to go through that before he left heaven. He was already in heaven. But yet, he come down here. He come down here for us. Because of the law, he knew. We are Gentiles. If we went into an Israel family or something like that, we had no hope. We as Americans over here, we had no hope. But through Jesus Christ, the blood that he shed for us on the cross, he suffered and died for us. Yes. I owe everything for him. I owe everything for him. He wants us to live every day of our life for him. He knows we've got to make a living. But yet, when someone comes to visit you, someone comes to visit you, you can always tell them about Jesus. He just wants us to witness. He don't want you to down them. He wants you to lift them up. Because if you if you try to persecute someone, you're going to run them away from the church. If you run them away from Christ, on Judgment Day, their blood is going to be dripping from your finger. I don't want that. And I have done that to some. That was before I knew better. Now I want to lift them up. I want to lift them up. Even one of the converts that left our church, I had a chance to talk to him yesterday. I tried to lift him up. I tried to brag on him a little bit. I told him, I says, I told him, I says, I love you. I says, even though you're, you're away from my church, you're starting another. I says, even though I don't agree with some of your stuff, you don't agree with our stuff. I said, it doesn't mean we're still not brothers in Christ. I said, it still doesn't mean that we can't serve the same Lord. I says, if you're wrong, it's going to fade out. If we're wrong, it's going to fade out. I said, but I was just been going on for years. I said, I don't think we're wrong. And I told him that. I was just being truthful. Now, he's already supposed to be born again, so I'm, I can't run him away. I wasn't talking to someone who's supposed to be lost. I was talking to someone who was saved. Now, if I'm talking to a lost man, I'm going to try to help him. I'm going to try to lift him up. Because most time a lost man is going to tell you all the pains that's going for him. And I didn't understand those pains until I got over here and got to read about the creature in chapter 8 here. People is often ask me, says, why does God allow this? Why did God? I've always said it was because of sin. What sin? I didn't know. But now I know it was the sin at the beginning. At the beginning. All this corruption that comes on the... Most of the stuff we blame it on the devil, it's not the devil. It was, the, it was mankind when Adam was first sinned. When he first sinned. We can't keep going on like that. We just... We are li living in... A planet that's cursed. So when the doctors say we're going to cure this, we're going to cure something else pops up. Why? This planet is cursed. But there's hope. If we're born again, we're going to overcome it. We're just here temporarily. 80, 60, 40, 20. Some live to be a little over 100. I don't think I'll never be here that long. If I'm not able to stand and walk and do for my own, I pray that the Lord will go ahead and take me. But the suffering we do here, it's worth it. What did Paul say? It's worth it. Because the glory that we're going to have when we get to heaven, 
That's going to be, I mean, everything. It won't be no pain. No more sickness. We'll have that new body, just like Christ. What are we going to do? We're going to shout. I'm going to shout while I'm down here. Hallelujah! Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for the Holy Spirit knocking on my heart's door. And every one of us need to be doing that. Every one of us. It's a better day coming. It's a better day coming. As we go through this life, I look back on it, all the pain and the suffering, the death. It's not been so bad. I've had a good life. Brother Danny, you've had a good life. All the times you were sitting out there running them rabbit dogs and listening to them run, it was music to your ears. If it wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have been there. All the times you was out there searching and seeing that little piece of metal, seeing that little piece of copper, and you were scrambling for it, that was your peace. You said, you just that was enjoying life. See, that was his passion. He worked down yonder at the sewer plant. Oh, I've been down there. He said, Mark, I just don't have the education. I said, I'm doing it. I'm making it. I'm, I'm trying to make it. I tried to encourage him. He made it through it. When he had to go through a test down there, he didn't know how he was going to do it. He, he was worried, but his boss man helped him. He helped him. He got through it. Every one of us go through something like this. Now, Brother Kevin, when I was in school, I hated school. Brother Kevin said he hated it. He said, but he could read something and remember it. If I could have read it, I might could have remembered, but I never learned how to read when I was in school. He said he had a hard time. I guess I should have stuck it out, but I didn't. But see, that was what Brother Danny enjoyed. I enjoyed running equipment. Thought I wanted to be in business. So I went in business. Well, after I got in business, I wanted to work for someone else. But I couldn't make the money working for somebody else as I couldn't be in business. So I said, well, I'll just take these headaches and I'll keep them. And I've kept them. But has it been good? It's been good and bad. I have enjoyed it. Oh, there's some good days. But now, the body, from the sins of this world, I'm just like yours. I have skin cancer, different things, heart problems, sugar problems. I guess I'm too sweet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But everybody, you make your life and you enjoy it the best that you can. The best that you can. I don't care if you're working on a job. If you hate the job, look to Jesus. What would Jesus do? Would he quit? No. Jesus says never quit. Keep. He's got you down. If you're making your bills and paying your bills, do it. But also pay your tithe. People say, they get born again. Oh, I can't afford to tie. That's okay. You will someday. You will someday. I love, I love God. I love Jesus. The Trinity, Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus Christ. All, all one. But Jesus himself, he died on the cross for me. He died on the cross for you. And that's who I bow down to. That's who I answer to. I can't talk to the Father, but only through Jesus Christ. Why? Because he died for me. Now, the Holy Spirit, that's the Father. He had to draw me. Unless you get drawn, unless the Holy Spirit draws you, you can't get saved. The Holy Spirit got to draw you. <clears throat> what was I going? I was going to go over here to uh, 
Let's go over here to that adoption. Uh, you know, how many, is anyone in here has ever been, have ever adopted anyone or have you ever been adopted? No one. Well, you know, through our laws, we never adopt our own. You've got to adopt somebody else's child. That means you you're taking them on. You're giving them a family. You can regenerate your ten family because they can take on your name and continue on. But you know when you're adopted into God's family, He only adopts His own. You've got to be born again. He don't adopt the things that's in us. He only adopts his own. You've got to be born again for you to be adopted. That means you're already his. You're already his. Why would have being covered with the blood of Jesus if we're covered with that blood and God Almighty looks down. He don't see where you came from. He don't even see where you are today. Like I said, he sees you in heaven. It's nothing here but this flesh. But we are what? To mortify. What does it tell us? We are to mortify this flesh every day. What's that talking about? Killing the desires of this flesh. Killing the desires of what this flesh want in this world. Things is mostly what it is. As a young man, you had wicked desires. Young people, listen to me. You might not think you have them, but you do. You have wicked desires. You, you want to pick on this one, or if he messes up, you want you want to laugh at him, but then, well, that's what's wrong with that. That's just having fun. It gets worse. It gets worse. It's time to come on. It's time to come on. Because then you get this group over here that'll follow you, and you'll pick on this one. And I hate a bully. All through school, I hated bullies. I hated for a group to pick on this one. I hated that. That's what you'll become. I'm not going to carry on. I don't, I'm not a long preacher like our pastor here. I've got, I, I've got away from my notes. But I want you to see what Christ done for us. And once you give yourself to him, what you really got. Yeah, that's the beginning of life. Really, truly, that is the beginning of life. Don't fall away. Don't fall away. Some people have asked Christ to come into their heart, come to church for a few months, and fall away. Jesus said, if they would have been of us, they would have continued with us. They tasted of it. But the cares of the world led them away. Don't let that happen to you. Continue with Christ. That's the reason he says it was easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. But with God, all things are possible. And it's true. With God, all things are possible. I'm not telling you you got to give everything you got away. Some preachers do tell you that. I've listened to some say that. And even Jesus told one rich man that. But he, what he wanted him to know was be willing. Be willing to use what you have for the glory of Christ. To help someone else. To see someone else saved. So they don't have to suffer. So they don't have to be condemned. So they don't have to go to hell. Bless you, and I thank you. I'm going to stop at 12.03.
I told you I would get y'all out of here early. Let us bow our heads. <coughs> Blake, come and play something softly.